So, snow melt is the process of converting ice into water by heat energy. And when we talk about snow pelt and snow packs, we really want to know how much water is in the snow at any given time and when will it melt. And knowing both of those is going to allow us as water resource engineers to be able to plan for when that snow does melt. Okay, so if it's if there's not a lot of snow and there's not a lot of water held in the Sierra Nevadas, we may need to restrict access to reservoir water for farmers in the winter months, for example. Um, so it's a whole balance of who needs water when they need the water and, and allowing them to get that water. So we're gonna talk about both of these questions, how much water and when will it melt? So first when we talk about how much water we want to be able to know at any time the amount of water that's contained within the snowpack. And so to do this, uh, we're going to come up with a, a value that's called snow water equivalent. That is the depth of the water if all of the snow melted simultaneously, instantaneously. Okay, so if all of the snow in Sierra Nevada is melted at the same time, what depth of water would that hold over that area? We're going to calculate this using what's called snow water equivalent, SWE. And it is equal to the depth of the snowpack times the density of the snow divided by the density of the water. Okay, so depth is the depth of the snowpack. There's a way to measure it using snow tubes. I'll show you some pictures of that in a couple slides. And then density of water is usually assumed to be the thousand kilograms per cubic meters and then density of snow is going to change over time okay so when it first snows um, if you've ever been in a sn seen snow which i know me and my kids don't see snow very often so this is this can be hard to understand but when it first snows the snow is not very dense it's very fluffy and light um, and then over time it melts a little bit on the top and then gets hard again and becomes more dense, kind of like a like a thick ice, like um, if you went ice skating, okay? And then it snows on top of it again, which decreases the density. So it's this whole um, ripening, they call it, of snow that happens over time in the season. So as an example, we're gonna calculate for a snowpack of depth one meter and an approximate density of snow equal to 100 kilograms per cubic meter, what is the snow water equivalent? So quickly on your handout, if you're following along, do this calculation and then compare your answer. So pause it, do the calculation, and then compare your answer. So I'm gonna calculate this using our equation, SWE equals the depth of the snow pack, that one meter times the dens density of snow given as 100 kilograms per cubic meters divided by the density of water. So I have one meter times 100 kilograms per meter cube divided by 1,000 cubic meters, 1,000 kilograms per cubic meters, which is 0.1 meter. Okay, so again, what this means is you have this snowpack and it's one meter deep, so just over three feet deep. And if instantaneously that snow all melted at the same time, it would result in this much water, just 10% of the water, so 0.1 or 10 centimeters of water, okay, over that same area. Area. This uh, figure here, which is in your handout, gives an example of the um, snow density over time for different areas in the country. So, for example, if I look at Alaska, you can see that the density of snow is at its maximum in like beginning of March and then it decreases. Uh, and then here is Northeast US forest. So they don't even give results before April and then it becomes more and more dense until May. Same with British Columbia, right? So density changes over the season. And again, you sometimes hear this called uh, the ripening of the snowpack. So here's an example of snow tubes and measuring the snow depth. And so 
this YouTube clip here, which I'll put a link on, a link to as well, and you can Google it also. Uh, these are the official snow tubes and they put them in very specific spots, at least in California, Dig, uh, put them in, hammer them down and then pull them out full of snow and then they weigh them really to see how much snow is in them. So this is how we get the depth of the snowpack. There are some more high tech um, options available now for measuring snowpack using flyover planes. And this is still a process that's being calibrated. So California, the Department of Water Resource currently does both of these, right? Um, so they are still calibrating to see if these flyover versions using satellites and LIDAR are gonna be as um, accurate as the snow tubes. <laughs> okay. So the next question we wanna figure out is when will the snow melt, right? So we want a simple method for estimating when the snow melts and how much of the snow is gonna melt. We're going to do this assuming a correlation between air temperature and snow melt. And this is a, a method called the degree day method for calculating snow melt. We're gonna use this in a lab more towards the end of the quarter. And this makes a big assumption that the factors um, affecting snow melt are directly related to temperature only, just air temperature. And so the degree day method says that the melt on any day is equal to C times the difference between the mean or the max daily temperature minus the base temperature at which snow melts, okay? So to define all those factors, M is snow melt in inches per day. TA is the mean or max daily temperature. You can calibrate the model either way. TM is the base temperature at which snow melts. So that's usually zero degrees Celsius or somewhere between 32 and 40 degrees Fahrenheit. And C is a melt rate coefficient or what's called a degree day factor. So C, that uh, degree day factor, you're gonna need to get that information from somewhere. There's lots of different sources. This top one is the data from US Army Corps of Engineers. Um, it's, and so you can base it off of mean temperature, or maximum temperature. And then here's an example for Central Sierras. They have it for April or May, which is when a lot of snow usually melts. Really important to note this says here to use degrees Celsius and obtain snow melt in centimeters per day, you multiply these factors by 4.57, okay? And then here's another source um, for different areas in the US, also from USGS. Or these are from US Army Corps of Engineers, sorry. Okay, so as an example, for a site in the Sierra Nevada in mid-May for a sequence of three days, the mean daily temperatures were four degrees Celsius, 5.3 degrees Celsius, and 6.5 degrees Celsius. And I was going to use the degree day index method to estimate the total snow melt for the three-day period. And be careful of your units. So I'm gonna use this equation, M is equal to C times TA minus TM. So I encourage you to pause the video here, work through this, and then come back and see if you get the same answer that I do. Did you pause it yet? Yeah, pause it. Do the calculation, then unpause it. All right, so I'm assuming that you have now paused it, done the calculation, and have come back. So I'm going to use this table that we previously went to, and I'm in mid-May in a site in the Sierra Nevada, so I'm going to use this C of 0 0.10. Notice here that I'm using degrees Celsius, so I am gonna have to apply this 4.57 factor, okay? So I'm gonna use C equals 0.1. I'm gonna write M is equal to 0.1 times four minus zero, zero degrees Celsius is approximately when snow begins to melt, plus 5.3 minus zero, plus 6.5 minus zero, times that 4.57 or a total of 7.26 centimeters of my snowpack is gonna melt. All right, so then if I, want it, if I wanna know exactly how much water that turns into, I also need to know my snow water equivalent. Okay, so this is just the snowpack that melts 
I also need to know my snow water equivalent to figure out how much total water that is. Okay, so that's the end of the snow melt for now. Again, we're gonna come back to this in the lab um, and talk about it in the context of climate change.